Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? Well, Lost Belt 6 came out, and there's going to be a Part 2 banner. And it's not Lancelot, because Lancelot is Part 3. No, this is the actual Part 2, so I'm going to talk about Castoria. That's going to be today's video. Um, everyone who's going to be summoning for this already has made plans to summon and has already planned ahead. <laughs> Because Castoria is Castoria. But if you're for some reason unaware of how good Castoria is, or maybe you're just a big fan of her uh, because of the story, I have no idea who... It's literally about... I have no idea who this video is for, honestly. I really just want to hear how you guys do when... So after the summon banner comes out, because I already have Castoria, I'm not going to do the banner. After that banner comes back, feel free to come back to this video and tell me how you did. But for everyone else, if there is people who are curious about what Castoria does... Uh, let's go into it. So, let's go. First, Artoria Castor, aka Castoria, which is what everyone basically calls her. She is a caster. She has one quick. She has three arts. She has one buster. Her her first skill is the Charisma of Hope B. Increases party's attack for three turns and charges a party's MP gauge. The attack up is 20% and the MP charge is 30%. Second skill is uh, Protection of the Lake A, charges one ally's MP gauge, and then increases the party MP generation rate for three turns. Um, it's 20% at level 10, and 30% at, for MP rate at level 10. And then finally we have um, her third skill, um, which is Caliburn, Sword of Selection EX, increases one ally's arts performance for three turns, and then increases their damage against threat of humanity enemies for three turns. I forgot it even did this. And then grants them invincibility for one turn. The arts up is 50%, the threat to humanity damage is 50%, and the cooldown is 6. And I should mention all of them are basically 5, 6, 6, 5, 6. Okay. Those are her skills. Um, in a word... Uh, this might be one of the most busted kits in the entire game. I think that's fair to say, just from these skills. Um, cat, she's a, a caster. <laughs> she's an art support. I think they stopped doing caster supports after this unit. Merlin was kind of, no, Waver was the template for what is peak generic good caster. Merlin was what killed it and had to cause a meta shift. And Castoria killed it so that no other caster could ever release us as a support. Because what she does here is just dumb. That's why Vich is... The two upcoming supports for Buster aren't casters. Uh, at least that's my theory on it anyway. Is that this unit is just so stupid good with everything she does. It's literally perfect. Like... 50% arts, amazing, obviously. A threat to humanity that lasts three turns, that's also 50%. You're not going to be like... Uh, actually, depending on the story, you're going to be dealing with them a decent amount um, for fresh humanity type of stuff. It's nice. It's not something you're going to always deal. But either way, 50% extra damage to a specific enemy type for three turns is pretty nice. Especially if you're using two Castoria because at that point it's just 100% up. This second skill that charges one ally's NP gauge and then also the NP generation rate. If you are somehow using an arts unit that just does not have enough NP, this will charge it up. With two Castorias, a 60% NP rate is stupid. <laughs> this is just dumb. And then it also gives 20% NP. Great. And this is just one of charisma, but good. Because it gives you 20% attack and then this gives you 30% NP. That's enough. 50%. And it's generic. Goes to everyone. Good. Insane. Stupid. Crazy. Like I said, Waver is... No, because Waver gives 20% to all, and then 30% to one. That's usually the breakdown. If there was a sp I don't know if there's been a unit that gives 50% to the entire team yet. Usually, I think 30% is usually the ideal of what you want, but anyway. Let's move on to our passive skill. Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation EX, One Zone Magic B, and then, uh... After you clear Evan Lafay, she gets an additional skill. So, I uh, should be fine. Something called Fey Eyes. So, uh, her pen skill for the third one is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, which is increased uh, attack against saber enemies in case you wanted a user for that. 
And then her noble phantasm is the around caliburn, the ray of hope that embraces you. Anti army rank A increases party's attack for three turns, removes party debuffs. Uh, it's a 30% attack up, and if you somehow have her MP5, it's 50%, which is stupid. Uh, grants party anti purge defense buff for N attacks three turns. Anti purge defense nullifies ignore invincibility and damage based on overcharge. This is just stupid. This is she's the one who debuted with this one. So the anti purge defense stack is at one per overcharge. So if you get her all the way to overcharge five, you have five stacks of something that they have to get through before they can actually deal damage to you. And the only way to remove it is with a move that literally removes buffs. Whew. Stupid, dumb. <laughs> this 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 is also. A really the only thing that she doesn't do is heal and that's at that point you may as well just bring a Tomomo if you want some healing and she can work with her perfectly fine but yeah that's Castoria there's nothing I can say that you already don't know about her she see you you see her at 10 10 10 level 100 on your friends list for a reason she is the de facto at least on NA um, the best support she probably will be for a while I mean, I don't know. I never actually got the gauge to see which people, what people thought was better, a Buster, you know, Vich and Oberon compared to Castoria. But it's not like the Vich and Oberon show up and Castoria is immediately forgotten. She still exists, it's still amazing on the side, but just in a completely different way. I think that's also something they started doing is that the upcoming support is completely busted in a completely different way from. Uh, Castoria because it has to be because they're buster support so now I always feel like it's like a world because it is a PV game literally it, it she's foolproof I think the only unit that has been proven to be not future proof is Merlin and that's because they decided that one specific uh, that Oberon will not work with Merlin which is a really funny thing. It feels like he's being punished for what they did to the game for introducing break bars and stuff. But even then, he's still really good. Like, I feel like for the most part, if you pick any of the... I think Scotty might actually be one of the ones. No, but Scotty's still good. She's just not as good as the others. There's a difference between being good and then not as good. It's not fair. Castoria, no one is as good as Castoria at that point. <laughs> like, if you want to start gauging on that bar... It's like comparing the the grade curve is insane, but anyway, uh, should you be summoning for her with anniversary coming up on the way? I uh, I can't answer that for you to be honest. Uh, if you already have set aside stuff for her, then you already know how good she is, and you realize that it'd be better if you're someone who has definitely a box that's more like arts focused, or you're a big fan of like an arts team. Then yes, she's the kind of thing to go for. It doesn't make sense to summon for someone like Vich, who's going to be a Buster support if you don't like playing Buster and you don't have any Buster servants. That is, <laughs> it's just kind of stupid at that point. I'm all for extremely good units and all that but if you don't actually have <laughs> the correct color then things are kind of be bad so in that case if you're also someone who just doesn't have a lot of good you units to use with castoria i think you're good to just kind of move her to the side it is another thing that if you have castoria then you would be more inclined to go get those arts units but you know that's a a person thing i can't tell you what to do but yeah Castoria is really good. Is she worth summoning for? Yes, of course. It's going to be up to the person individually, though, to if they want to do any summons before anniversary. Because, you know, anniversary is usually a pretty hype time. But, you know, Castoria, they put her here for a reason. They put her before anniversary for a reason. It's specifically to get you to summon and waste all your same quartz before anniversary. So, <laughs> if you play their game, then you know what their game is. But if you don't care about their game and you have no interest on any of the dudes coming up, which includes um, the summer units and also Lancelot. Though, funny enough, if you because she is a little bit before anniversary, I think um, you can use your same quartz to summon for her, and then you'll get a new batch of same quartz coming in from the anniversary. Not a lot. I mean, a decent amount, but, you know, enough to do summons. Obviously, never enough for a pity, but enough to at least feel good about summoning or feel bad, depending on how much you end up wasting. So, you know, there's ways to justify it to yourself if you want to summon. I have her, so I don't have to worry about that. I got her on her debut banner, 
specifically to avoid this situation. So I wouldn't have to go, ah, damn. Which is the other reason why I kind of want to make sure that I get Vich on the first go around. Because I don't want that situation to come up. Where now every future banner where I want a new unit, I have to wonder, ah, but damn, this returning unit I really want. So, unfortunately, there's no real way to guarantee it. But, you know, ha have good luck. <laughs> that's the end of the story. And that's the end of the video. Very thank you very much for watching. Like I said, for the most part, I'm pretty sure everyone already knows whether or not there's something for Castoria. But hey, if you're on the fence, then I hope the video helped you in a little bit, and you can show your thanks by leaving a like and doing all that good stuff for me, and uh, uh, commenting, and what else do you do on your YouTube stuff? You uh, subscribe, there you go. And yeah, feel free to tell me how you did. I'm always interested to hear. Best of luck to y'all. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to go back to Street Fighter 6, I guess at this point, and waiting for the Persona 4 re- not Persona 4, Persona 3 remake. Uh, if you watch enough of my videos, you already know I'm a big fan of Persona 3, <laughs> so <laughs> can't wait for more Lotus Juice songs. Oh uh, yeah, bring us out when Moon's Reach is started. Goodbye, everybody. Till next time, goodbye.